friends, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to give a, um, a video today. So I want to kind of finish, not finish, cause that's not the right word. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to um, kind of wrap up the decluttering 101 series and move into um, a new section of homemaking for like budgeting and meal planning and all different aspects of homemaking. But um, in order to do that, I just wanted to do like kind of a, a wrap up video. So that's what this is gonna be. And I'm hoping that I can make it through it relatively quickly, but I do have a lot of bullet points here. Um, can you tell that I'm a Presbyterian? <laughs> I'm like, like three points, no, no. I've got like seven sub points and whatever. <laughs> Um, anyways, I am very happy because as you guys may already know, we got our satellite dish back. Our Starlink was hit by lightning. And so I've been having to go into town to upload videos and that's really annoying. So I'm very glad that we got our internet back. I'm very, very excited. All right. So, um, today's video, I'm going to be referencing my notes here. So if I'm not looking at the camera, that's why I'll have to figure out maybe some sort of like whiteboard or something where I can be looking at the camera and still be talking to you guys. Anyways, um, this is a build the plane as I fly it sort of situation. So if I can do it, you can do it too. All right. So what I want to do is I want to share my daily routine just to give you an idea of kind of how my day flows. And this changes I'm pretty flexible when it comes to my routine because I have to be. I'm very involved at my church. I'm very involved with our homeschooling co-op. I'm very involved with charity at the local community level and I'm I'm pretty busy. So, um, and I'm able to do that because I only have one child and he's older. So when he was younger, I didn't have this type of free time. So I don't want you to think that if you're in a different life season than I am, that you should also be doing these things. That's not true. Your mission as a woman is first and foremost, your mission field is your husband and your children. And that is always your first mission. That's just flat out scriptural. So don't think that if you're a young mom with a horde of kids and a husband and you're in this like busy, busy season in life that you also need to be out in your community doing things. No, that's don't get stressed out about that. If you have the capability to stretch yourself and do that, then great. But if you're in a season where that's not possible or even probable, don't. Don't worry about it because your first mission field is always going to be your husband and your children. Period. The end. Um, so don't don't feel like you need to be out of the house doing something else. That's not a thing that exists until you're in a different season in life. Um all right, so my first point on, on the, uh, my first like talking about my daily routine is I wake up early. Um, and so what's early to me? 6, 6.30 is early for me. If I do not set an alarm, I will usually sleep till about 8 a.m. And I go to bed early. I go to bed at 10 <laughs> and I will usually sleep if I don't have an alarm till 8. So I'm just one of those people that likes to sleep. So I have had to gain the discipline of waking myself up early. I've used several different methods and the one that worked the best was just doing it. It doesn't really matter what method you choose. Um, just get out of bed and do it. It's just discipline. That's all it is. There's no easy button for it. It stinks. I'm not a fan. I don't like being awake early, <laughs> but it is the number one way that I fit more hours into my day. And the, I only need eight hours of sleep anyway. I function just fine on less sleep than that. Um, it's just, I would rather stay in bed. If I'm being honest, I'm a little bit lazy. So I would like to be in bed. Um, so I, I set my alarm for six, sometimes 6.30 and sometimes seven, just depending on a kind of what the schedule is, but I aim for six. And if I can get up at six, then for about that first hour, I'm very slow. I'm just... I'll sit outside and watch the sunrise for 30 minutes. I'll have some water. I'll do my Bible study. I'll um, catch up on texts that I missed the night before because I went to bed so early. <laughs> Those, I'll just, my morning is very slow until about an hour after I wake up. And then I will have some caffeine and I'll get moving. 
just something about having that very slow time first thing in the morning really works for me. And that might not be what works for you. But if I don't get up early and I'm, 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 I'm waking up at eight or 8.30 or nine, and then the day has to start right then, I don't get that slow start to the morning that just really brings me peace. And I'm rushing. I feel like I'm rushing. I already feel like I'm behind. So it's that waking up early. It's crucial. It's key. I know it stinks. Do it anyway. Uh, just, just, just do it. <laughs> Suck it up and do it. All right. Um, but my routine will go something like that. So I'll wake up 6, 630. I spend about 15, 20 minutes watching the sunrise. I sit out on the patio. Um, I have some water and then I am getting ready to start the day. So about 730, my husband gets up and he starts getting ready to go out to work. And I try to have his breakfast and lunch packed before 7.30, um, before he's ready to leave. Then at eight, he leaves. At eight, I do my Bible study. If I haven't already done it earlier, um, 8.30, I start chores. So that's gonna be laundry. Um, I'll get stuff going. I have a robot vacuum, um, so I'll start that. It took me years to, to splurge on that. And once I did, it was, it was super worth it. Um, but for a while I couldn't, I couldn't justify buying the robot vacuum, but once I did, I was like, I could never live without it. This is how spoiled I am now. <laughs> um, and then I do chores for about an hour. And then from 9.30 to 11.30, I do my deep focus work. It's the work that I don't really want to do, but it just needs to get done. So typically that's planning for, uh, women's ministry. That's, um, planning YouTube content that's maybe doing some research, but it's, I find that I have a, a really good, about 90 minutes of focus between 9.30 and 11.30. And so I, I pin my hardest tasks there. That, that time is gonna be for the hardest tasks that I have to do that day, because that's when I have the most focus and the most energy. And also it's when my son is getting up, he usually gets up around 9, 9.30, sometimes later and I might have to go wake him up, but we're working on it. <laughs> it's a skill he also has to learn. It's a discipline he has to learn. So anyways, um, it's just a slow start to the morning for everybody. So since it takes him about an hour to also get going, that time I can really use on focused work is super helpful. It just helps me get so much production done. Then um, I don't eat usually until about 1130. I'm typically fasting. Um, I try to be done eating around seven at night and I don't eat until 1130 or 12 o'clock in the next morning. I'm just not hungry. I do like to have a cup of coffee before then, but not until about an hour after I've woken up. I found that if I hold off on caffeine until I'm actually awake, then I don't get that afternoon crash. So that's been a very helpful little tip. I wait, I don't have coffee first thing. I wait about an hour. Um, okay. So then around, I take my supplements at 1130. I have lunch at 1130. I try to drink a bunch of water around 1130. Um, 1130 is kind of when I take that break from that deep focus work. And then about 12 o'clock, I'll start my daily chores beyond just the laundry and the vacuuming that I did in the morning. I have a routine that's a schedule, a cleaning schedule. I'll share it in a, in a later video that kind of rotates throughout the week based on what needs to be done in the house. And so from like 12 to one is cleaning time. It's the time where I tackle the tasks that need the most energy, like cleaning the stove top, that kind of stuff. Um, and then from like one to two, I do a quiet hour. And the quiet hour, it depends. It could be listing stuff on Poshmark. It could be taking pictures of stuff that I need to get um, up on Marketplace. It could be reading a book painting, embroidery. It could be a hobby. It could be, um, reading for an upcoming book club that I'll be, that I'll, that I'm participating in or that I'm hosting that kind of stuff. So from like one to two, I try to do a quiet time. And that's also a time where my son gets quiet time so he can read a book. He can, um, listen to music. He can do what he wants during that hour, but just trying to build in margin in my day. That's so helpful, especially when you have young kids if you can figure out a way to build in even just 10 minutes of margin here or there, it's so helpful and so restful to you. It makes you feel like you have a little time to just breathe during the course of the day. And when you have a lot of young kids, it, that's a difficult life stage. 
Um, it's There's so much blessing in that life stage, but it can be difficult. And so I wanna acknowledge the difficulties, but I also wanna say, you're gonna make it through it. I made it through it too. And um, try if you can to build in 10 minutes of margin here or there. Um, and then about between two to 3.30, I'll do another deep work session. So about another 90 minutes where I might be, I'm usually doing creative um, work at that point in time. I'll pop myself a Yerba Mate. I love the Yerba Mate um, by Clean Cause. They're um, not Yerba Mate, Yerba Mate, sorry. By Clean Cause. It's their like probiotic drinks with Yerba Mate. They're really delicious. I get them on Amazon. Um, and half of the proceeds for that go to addiction recovery. So that's kind of cool to support that. I don't know anything about the company. I don't know, like I'm not endorsing them or anything like that, but I just like their product. That's all. I haven't researched them at all. So if they're a, if they're a trash company, I, I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying that's what I like. So anyways, I'll have a little bit of caffeine. I try to be done like 3.30 at the latest with caffeine. I find that if I'm drinking caffeine any longer than that, then I'm going to have a hard time falling asleep restfully at night. And so I'll do creative work during that time block. That's going to be coming up with new content ideas. That's going to be brainstorming, maybe fundraisers for charities that I'm involved with. That's going to be um, DIY decor for the house or coming up with creative storage solutions. I just seem to have a little burst of creativity in the afternoon where that like that energy that I get in the afternoon is more suited towards creative endeavors and not just like the hardcore, let me power through it stuff that I have to get done. All right. Um, and then from like 3.30 to 4, I kind of clean up from whatever I was doing. When I'm in a creative zone, I don't really worry about like cleaning up after myself. I just wait till I'm out of it and then I clean up when I'm done with that. And then from four to five, I'm typically doing afternoon chores, which that rotates every week too. Five to six, I'm getting ready for dinner. I'm making dinner. We try. To, I try to have dinner on the table, six, 6.30. Try to be done eating by seven. 7.30, we typically go for a walk, but here lately in the afternoons, it's been really, really stormy. So we haven't been able to go for our walks in the afternoons. And then by 8.30, I want to be showered and ready for bed. Like I'm tapped out by 8.30 at night. Um, and this is like my dim the lights, put on some calm music, get like I have my phone go to night mode at that point in time where it, you can't contact me. <laughs> like, And then um, bed, bed at 10. Like between 8.30 and 10, I am done with the day. If you hear a bunch of noise in the background, it is my husband on the roof laying cable for the new Starlink satellite dish because it's going in a different spot that hopefully will not get struck by lightning and destroy half of our electronics. <laughs> so he's pull, I can hear him pulling cable through the attic. Um, all right, so like that's, that's my basic routine, but it changes because we have co-op on Monday and so Monday from like nine to four, we're at co-op, I'm teaching classes. I can't do all that stuff. And then Wednesdays, I have a bunch of meetings for church first thing in the morning. Sundays is I serve at church usually. And then Saturdays is our Sabbath. So I try not to be um, busy on Saturdays. I try not to do a bunch of stuff on Saturdays. I try to make Saturday a restful day. Doesn't always work out that way, but that's what I try to do. I aim for that. So this is just like a, just a um, basic schedule. It's a bones of a schedule that I follow. Um, 10 to 15 minutes in the morning and evening. So I want to kind of transition out of like my daily schedule into some practical tips for um, setting a daily routine, trying to think through, hey, how can I implement really good homemaking skills, housekeeping skills in my daily routine? So I would say probably one of the top 10 like tips that I have is to find 10 to 15 minutes of time both in the morning and the afternoon where you can pick one spot and just tidy that one spot. Um, tidy up your common areas, your living room, your entryway, your kitchen. Um, put things away. When you see that things need to be put away, stop what you're doing and go put them away. Unless you're in like a focused bout of work, 
set some time aside to just put things away. Look, things have a way of collecting on surfaces. And like I've talked about, clutter attracts clutter. So give something a home, give the thing that keeps ending up on a surface a home and make it live in that home, right? It doesn't get to live rent free on the clean space that you're trying to keep. You need to give it a place to live. Um, wipe down surfaces and spills as soon as they happen. Do not leave spills to get sticky, to get bugs, to get stains, all that. Just wipe them as soon as they happen. I know it's a, a pain, do it anyway. Um, sweep vac, RoboVac every day. So if you have a big floor plan, like we have a lot of square footage, a RoboVac was absolutely necessary. Like this was no, it was no longer an option not to have one. When we built this house, uh, I, I had to. We have animals, we're outside and inside all the time. It was well worth the investment. I use a narwhal um, because it also has a mop function and I care. I actually care more about the mop function than I do the, the vacuum function. Um, I love their products. I can 100% recommend their products. Uh, we did have a iRobot vacuum. Um, I forget what it was, but we ended up selling it because I hated it. It was loud. It sounded like an airplane going through my house all day long. Hated it. And it bashed my baseboards so badly that I had to repaint my baseboards because my baseboards had big black scuff marks all over them. But anyways, we got rid of the iRobot thing and ended up with a narwhal and I absolutely love it. Um, if you have a smaller house, that's not necessary. It, you, you could just use a stick vac to hit the hot spots, the areas where dirt and sand and pet hair collect, that's fine. Uh, for years, I just used a stick vac when we had a, a way smaller um, place that we were renting. Uh, okay, tip number two. Um, one room or one chore at a time if you are really feeling overwhelmed. So let's say that you're new to homemaking and you have a cluttered filled space that you're currently living in, or maybe you're not living in your own space. Maybe you're living in your parents' space and your parents don't clean. Um, or maybe you're living with your in-laws and they don't clean. I don't know your living situation, but if you're feeling really overwhelmed, pick one space or one chore to complete during your focus work time. So when we first moved into this house, I was feeling really overwhelmed. Even though we were starting with a, an empty space, we also pulled everything back to the drywall and started constructing as soon as we moved in. So I was living in a construction zone. Um, truthfully, we still sort of are. We still have a lot of projects that we need to finish, but the bulk of the work is done now so we can live pretty comfortably. Um, but anyways, I was living in a construction zone. There were boxes everywhere. I was super overwhelmed. I didn't have a whole lot of help because my sister who lives with us was working full time. My husband's working full time. My son has to do his classes. So it was like basically me and that's fine. Um, I just needed to realize that I'm not actually superwoman. I cannot do all the things. I am not God. <laughs> so I just needed to pick one chore or one room to work on at a time. And that's how we got through it. It took a year and a half, but we picked one area and we worked, worked on that one area. And I had to just let go of all the other little things that I needed to do um, for the time being to, to get the one area done or to a point where it was close enough to done where I could breathe about it. Um, three, make yourself a cleaning caddy or a cleaning cart. If you can um, make a little bucket that you can carry around, a shower caddy will work too. I have a cleaning cart, it's in my laundry room. I just store all the cleaners and all the cleaning products and everything on that cart. It stays there unless I need to pull it out and drag it somewhere, but that's where it lives. It has a permanent home there and I just don't have to worry about it. Um, number, Four, natural cleaners. I'm a big fan of natural cleaners. I use a lot of vinegar, baking soda, and lemon or orange. Cheap, efficient, works. Just make sure to do your research that your vinegar, baking soda, and orange or lemon isn't gonna hurt the surfaces that you want to use it on. Quick Google search will help you answer those questions. Um, next, steam clean microwave once a week, maybe more often if you use your microwave a lot. So we have like an Advantium microwave, which is like a microwave air fryer combo 
oven combo, whatever. And it gets so gross. Like, I don't know if it's just because it heats up so hot, but it, it just, the stuff gets caked on it. So all I do is I take a coffee mug, I fill that up with water, I set that for two minutes, and then I leave the door on the microwave closed for like five to 10 minutes, and then I come in and everything's so easy to wipe up. That's like my number one microwave cleaning hack. You don't have to buy anything crazy. You don't have to buy any cleaners. This is just hot water, right? Um, just make sure that you don't open the microwave immediately after the two minutes is up because you are superheating that water and it could boil out and splash on you. Let it cool down naturally in the microwave. It will have loosened all of the grime in your microwave and it's so simple to, to clean out after that. Um, set a cleaning schedule. It, I will be talking a little bit more about cleaning schedules um, in another video, but find what works for you. There's a million schedules out there. I'll share my favorite planner in the, at the end of this video um, that has a cleaning schedule built into it that I do loosely follow. Um, a lint roller for cloth surfaces, lampshades, um, things that can't be dusted. Lint rollers are phenomenal for getting pet fur and dust off of them. It's really, really fast. Um, clean your air vents monthly, especially your bathroom and your air handler vents. I don't know if it's because we're in Florida, but our air conditioner air handler vent gets really full of cat hair and dust. So every single month I make sure I clean that all out. Uh, it's just, it's a chore that most people don't think about. And when I was going into people's houses, universally those would be really, really filthy. So just do it because you're, if you're not doing that, then you're, you're breathing in all that dust and dirt that's getting spread throughout your air handler. All right, um, what's next? Nightly kitchen tuck-ins. This is just, mm, it's perfection. I love going to bed with an absolutely clean kitchen. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes I wake up to a, a sink full of dishes, but I do try my best to make sure that I tuck my kitchen in before I go to bed. Now, sometimes somebody gets up in the middle of the night and makes themselves a snack and doesn't clean up after themselves or something like that and things happen. But I try my best to make sure that my kitchen is clean before I go to bed. It's just going to be so refreshing to wake up to a clean work area. And I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, so having it clean and tidy means a lot to me. Um, okay, the more you practice housekeeping, the more efficient and manageable housekeeping becomes. So it's just like the more you work out, the more manageable working out becomes. The more you run, the better you become at running. Housekeeping is not any different than that. It's, it's a practice. It's a discipline that you have to learn. My favorite apps, uh, my favorite app for housekeeping, 2D, T-O-D-Y, it's free. You can set your own cleaning schedules. 100% check that app out. It's been game changing for me. And then my favorite planner is the Passionate Penny Pincher Planner. If you're not into apps and you prefer a paper schedule, the Passionate Penny Pincher has a daily, monthly, um, and seasonal and yearly cleaning list with to-do tasks. It's really phenomenal. It's what I was using. I still actually, like that's my favorite planner. I use that planner daily for like my daily planning. Um, but I started using that before I started using 2D for cleaning. And then when I found 2D, I really just swapped to that instead. But I still do use the Passionate Penny Pinchers weekly chore list because they have some really good ideas for like deep cleaning things that I don't typically think about or that I haven't thought about until I was started using that planner. And then so it gives me little ideas on things to do during the course of the year when I maybe have extra time where I could do a bigger chore. All right, so that's all I had to cover for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe and um, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about these tips and tricks and any other content that you would like to see. I have a whole list of videos that are upcoming. So have a great day. Solo Dea Gloria. Bye.